Hey up everyone, Magpie Gaming here, I hope you're all doing well. In this video I'm going to go through the details that we know about Escape from Tarkov Arena right now, which, full disclosure, there aren't many details out there, but we know a little bit more now than we did as like the point where they dropped the trailer. So I'm going to go through what we know, pick it apart. It's probably going to give us more questions than it is answers, but we'll see. So reading from what Battlestate have put out, it says Escape from Tarkov Arena is a standalone game project, a session-based multiplayer first-person shooter for PC with all the known and beloved hardcore game mechanics of EFT. Players will take part in gladiatorial battles in various arenas of the city of Tarkov, organised by a mysterious group of arena masters led by the host. The game will feature various PvP and PvE game modes, ratings, weapon and gear unlocks and unique features for owners of the main Escape from Tarkov game, such as the ability to play as your main profile character. For owners of the EOD pack, Arena will be available for free as DLC for all other versions of EFT, the arena will be paid and you can also purchase the arena separately without buying the main game. EFT Arena closed testing is scheduled to start in autumn 2022. And that is all the information that Battlestate have released about this right now. They did put out a couple of images, still images of the map that you can see in the background. But that is it, that's all they've given us to go on. So it does leave us with a lot of questions. Um, the first one is obviously EOD owners are going to get this game off the bat. They class it as a DLC for EOD owners, even though they also class it as a standalone game. But it does say for other versions of EFT, the arena will be paid. Does that mean that if you own another version, you will get a discount on buying arena because you own a version of the game? No information on that yet, but I think that should be a thing. I think if you've already purchased Escape from Tarkov, you've bought into the beta testing, as they like to call it, of an unfinished game, and they are now producing another game at the same time, which will have eaten into the overall production of Escape from Tarkov. So to be invested in a game where they've taken resources away and created a different game and then want to charge a full price for it, I think that's a little bit of a dick move. So you should get a discount on it in my opinion, but we'll have to wait and see if you do. They also say that the testing, closed testing, is going to start this autumn. We have no idea of how you get in on the closed testing. I've seen a lot of people comment saying that EOD owners should get instant access to the closed testing that's not going to happen there are a lot of eod owners out there so giving every eod owner access to the testing isn't closed testing because what's to stop people buying the eod edition when the testing starts they would then have instant access to the testing which wouldn't be closed at all so i can see it being an invite only um sort of thing you'll probably have to register your interest and it'll be a, you know potluck whether you actually get in on it probably like it was with the ets servers that they launched the other year where they were testing new features you had to be invited to go into that you know regardless of who you were if you wasn't invited you wasn't allowed to use them so i can see it being something like that close testing they're not going to allow a lot of players in it's going to start small and slow gradually build up i think i can see a point where the testing does start to include all eod owners but we'll have to wait See. Then we've got this bit about where it says, such as the ability to play your main profile character. So I take that to mean that if you have customised your character in Escape from Tarkov, which we can all customise our characters, we choose different voice lines, we choose the face, and we can also choose different clothing that you unlock as you progress through the main game. So I, I guess that means that if you've customised your character, you'll be able to use that character when you're playing in Arena, which is okay. It's nothing special, it's nothing greatly unique, but okay, if you've really because you know if you're running around in the killer track zoop yeah maybe you want to have that in the arena so that's good but in the description it says unique features so that would just be one feature so what are these other unique features that you're going to be able to bring over they're going to have to be very careful with this because it's a standalone game but they're going to allow a little bit of crossover if you have the eod edition what they're going to allow to cross over other than the ability to have your main profile character in is unknown right now so they're going to have to be very careful with that also how you go about gear unlocks and the ratings how you customize your weapons we know none of, no information on that right now we're gonna have to wait and see i can possibly see a system like csgo where you're basically given the ability to purchase more things because of how you're how well you're playing in the actual game it could be that it's something like that i think if you're going to be able to bring over things from your stash in the main game that's just going to make it totally unbalanced it's going to be way overkill for some people so we'll have to wait and see also the pvp and 
in PvE game modes, when you look at the trailer you can see that you start in squads of 5, it doesn't look like there's any other larger squads than that. There's like two bits in the trailer where you've got like a starting area and there are 5 players in each one of those, so I'm assuming it's squads of 5. If you don't have a full squad, are you going to be able to fill in the spare spaces with bots? That's another question that I have. Obviously the AI in Escape from Tarkov is very good, we know that, you go up against the rogues, you go up against the raiders, they can be sometimes very very lifelike, it can be hard to tell the difference between them and actual players sometimes so could it be that you might be able to fill your squad in with um bot players who knows or does this simply mean that whilst you go into the game there could be scavs and bots in the game that you also have to fight as well as the other players that you're going up against maybe every now and again a scav boss is dropped in for you to fight and maybe they drop unique items who knows like i said there's a lot up in the air about this there's more questions than there is answers right now i do have to say though that i like the look of the mode i like the look of it i think it looks pretty good i think it looks a little bit more chill and i do agree with what a lot of other people are saying a lot of people have put off playing escape from tarkov because of the ultra hardcore nature of having to learn all the mechanics you've got to learn all the gun customization although i don't think it's as hard as some people think you know like to make out that it is but it, it can be a daunting game for people that have never played something like this so this gives people the chance to play with the gameplay mechanics that you've got in a Escape from Tarkov you know the gun mechanics the player movement mechanics things like that but it, it sort of gives you a buy into it without having to go and learn all of that stuff as well so I can see it bringing a new generation of players in so I kind of understand where Battlestate are coming from by creating this it's going to bring new players into the Escape from Tarkov world it's obviously going to bring them revenue in which is maybe something that they could be struggling with at the moment who knows you know with everything that's gone on so far this year in Russia obviously their assets and their ability to make money will have been compounded to quite a large degree I would assume in some ways so this could be a way for them to pull back some of that revenue but again these sales are these sales actually going to reach them are we are we still sort of sanctioning banks are they going to be able to get hold of the money I really don't know I don't know how that all works that's a whole political arena that I'm not really um too well up on to really give a, a, a proper opinion on but yeah I like the look of it I do also agree with some people's sentiments on this though they've obviously had a large team working on this put a lot of thought into it shouldn't that have all gone into the main game first shouldn't they be working on the main game because obviously and i do agree this sort of production of the main game has gone very very slow in the last sort of year and a half especially last year we saw little to no content for quite a while because of the move over to unity 2019 we've seen a lot more since but it's still pretty slow in most people's opinion you know should this have been left on the back burner whilst they try to complete the main game i don't know i'm, I'm on the fence about it i think you know i don't try to bash them too much but i think maybe you know we've all been waiting so long to see streets of tarkov but at the same time they've been developing the arena they've been developing the lighthouse map maybe they're trying to do too many things at once who knows i don't know everybody will have an opinion on that let me know in the comment section down below but that's pretty much it for this video ladies and gentlemen i just wanted to talk about the details of this arena that we have so far like i say more questions given than there are answers but i'm sure that all of these will get answered eventually so as always ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching and listening don't forget to like share and subscribe stay safe and i will catch you in the next one take care